Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, my name is Gabriele Tonelli, and I'm very honored to speak to you today, uh, presenting um, a study about sword making in northern Italy between 17th centuries and 16th centuries. Um, uh, the study is in particular uh, about the productive district of Brescia, that is a city in northern Italy that was uh, during that period one of the most important um, production sites of weapons. So uh, here we go. A bit of history for um, historical sources agree that Iron Age in Italy began around the 10th century before Christ, but it's around uh, 8th century that the, in the region in, of Etruria, actually is Tuscany, in the Middle East Italy, uh, grew uh, the siderurgical activity uh, thanks to the Reach the presence of rich uh, iron ore deposits, and many findings of archaeological remains of smelting furnaces have been found in that region. And other founds were uh, blades, iron blades, are an object uh, found mostly in Etruscan grave. Uh, dated uh, 7th century before Christ. Probably Iron Age reached the north of Italy around 5th century before Christ, probably thanks to the Etruscan expansion and commercial exchanges with northern uh, Celt populations. Besides, the north uh, territories were rich of iron ore. Uh, here we can see a uh, rock carving in, in Camonica Valley, close to Brescia, date back to the 5th century before Christ, known as the blacksmith scene, and other findings of remains of smelting furnaces in this area. Under the Romans, uh, Brescia became an important commercial hub um, between Italy and the population living beyond the Alps. And the siderurgic industry was improved in order to supply iron weapons to the legions. And uh, the sixth legion, composed mostly by Brescian people, was known as Legio Ferrata, literally, literally meaning uh, made of iron. Unluckily, not many uh, iron artifacts have come down to us, uh, but uh, the metallurgical activity was uh, very advanced, as uh, we can see um, the bronze statue made in northern Italy in the first century, the winged, winged victory. After the Roman Empire fell, uh, Brescia remained an important weapon productive site uh, under the Lombard kingdoms. Um, we can see here some iron blades found near Brescia in Lombard graves. But it was during the Renaissance, uh, under the control of the Republic of Ven Venezia, that Brescia reached uh, the peak performance. And why Brescia? Uh, mostly because of the richness of iron ore containing manganese, the skills of the people uh, reached in centuries of tradition in working iron, wide forests from which obtain uh, charcoal for the forges, and, and the water uh, utilized as driving force. We can see here the map and the location of Brescia, in the heart of North Italy. In 
in the detail uh, the valleys where uh, the ore was uh, ex extracted, the city, and a sample of iron ore with the chemical analysis, and the remains of one of the many blast furnaces operating during the Renaissance in Brescia. The productive uh, process was organized to maximize the quantity of produced weapons. The Venetian governor Giovanni D'Alezze left us a detailed description of the entire process. And the iron ore extracted in Trom Trompia and Camonica valleys, where uh, was um, reduced uh, into blast furnaces with indirect method to obtain cast iron. Then cast iron was uh, worked uh, to get steel, um, thanks to an operation of affination in special forges called the Brescian forges. Then the forging operations to produce a component. Every forge was special, specialized to produce a single component. Every component was then assembled uh, in the city of Brescia. Here we can see a painting showing the process. Some examples of weapons and armors produced in Brescia during that period. And an example of a typical forge and abrasion furnace on the right. A typical forge composed by a forge, the hammer, the, the trip hammer, moved by a wheel, a hydraulic wheel, and a hydraulic system uh, to generate compressed air, known as the tromp. And the abrasion affinition forge. Uh, thanks to an airflow, the cast iron um, could become a uh, steel. But why the weapons produced in Brescia were so appreciated? Uh, there are many techniques that unluckily uh, are still secrets, um, mostly because the those secrets were jealously kept by the forge masters and no written witness by the artisans have been found most of all because those masters were illiterate and because they didn't want to share their their secrets even though there are some some treatises uh, written by some authors uh, that tried to describe the processes of working, uh, producing, working, and heat tem heat treating uh, steel, but uh, in those treatises, uh, the word "secret" is recurring many times. So to answer the question, in 2015, uh, a reverse engineering study on an original fal falcon sword. Uh, also known as Storta sword, was made uh, in order uh, to discover which were the secrets of the Russian production. Uh, Storta sword is 100 single edged uh, blade, um, broad blade and curved, and a length between uh, 600 and 900 millimeters and it was one of the most widespread sword type in northern Italy during the Renaissance very common along the soldiers and along the common people thanks to some symbols and written and the written EHS marked on the Ricasso it was possible to date, to date the Storta in the first half of 17th century most, li um, most likely the blade was forged in Caino 
a small village 15 kilometers from Brescia uh, by the master Tommaso de Zenzani. Here, a comparison with other falcons produced in Caino. The starter was measured and the and other start swords forged in Caino in the same period were measured as well. And that was made in order to find some recurring size uh, that were maybe common in every sword. Um, since a forge could produce up to 20, 25 blades per day, it it's reasonable to assume that the production was standardized and so some recurring sites were uh, searched. The measures in millimeters were converted into the unit of measurement util utilized at the at that time that was called a uh, point equivalent to uh, 4.5 millimeters. Here we can see the uh, conversion in millimeters and a recurring size was found uh, the pommel the length of pommel and the length of the grip 13 and 21 points each uh, those two measures are in a golden ratio between not only those um, very interesting is the sword which shows the name of master Tommaso de Zenzani marked 12 times on the blade. Here there's a representation and with the merge measures converted in points. Uh, many dimensions uh, as the length of the pommel, the length of the grip, the blade, the center of gravity are in golden ratio uh, between them and they belong to the Fibonacci sequence. So after the, that, it was made a metallurgical study that included a microstructural exam, chemical analysis, and, uh, and my, my electron microscope observation. Here, the results of the micros, micrographic exam. It was found a central ferritic area and a bionetic mix, microstructure close to the surface. And it's possible to see it by the difference of the color between the core and the surface. surface. And some microstructure uh, micrographs here. Uh, hardness shown here below. Um, Bigger's hardness on surface is around 500, 600, and it decreases in the blade core. And the core, uh, the core and the surface are div divided by along the slugging inclusions that it was identified. They were identified as um, a welding line here and here. The surface hardness very high, then the core decrease and high again. No metallic inclusions uh, within the core were big and randomly spread, mostly composed of phyalite, a compound of silicon, calcium, and iron. You can see here. Uh, originated during the finishing process, most likely. Inclusions within certain surfaces are disposed uh, in layers, and uh, they mostly are composed by glassy compounds and silicon and calcium. Probably are entrapments of the fluxes utilized during the forging and other inclusions rich in uh, of iron oxide have been observed, probably entrapments of scale during the forging. Here condensed the main results of the mix microstructural and inclusional analysis. Uh, it was observed a uh, difference of carbon content between the core and the surface 
probably the blade was heat treated with a carburization and quench, considering the higher carbon content on uh, the surface and the higher hardness. So, uh, 0.2% carbon in the core, 0.5% uh, in the skin and a different microstructure. Um, and the core and skin divided by a welding line. The analysis on the time shown a ferrite core, uh, ferritic core and bainitic surfaces as well. Um, the surface hardness is around 500. Uh, points and it decreases moving towards the pommel. The pommel was composed only by a ferritic microstructure. Um, the shape of inclusions um, it was helpful to hypothesize a possible method uh, adopted by artisans to re realize it, folding a piece of wrought iron around the central spine. Uh, between the pommel and the tongue was found um, a substance rich of carbon here. Uh, probably the remains of an organic compound like leather or glue uh, utilized to fix the grip to the pommel. The guard was analyzed as well. And it was composed by uh, only fer ferritic microstructure. So the hypothesis uh, were that the blade was made uh, by a uh, broad uh, iron core uh, inserted into pattern weld steel block. And the starting muscle was forged into the final shape. And finally, a treatment of carburizing and quenching uh, was made. So uh, the final blade was a blade with a hard and strong surface, so it's able to be sharpened, but um, with a thorough and flexible core. The pommel and the guard, uh, just through the iron, forged into the final shape. Um, a thorough guard, so it's able to absorb the impacts during the duel. A uh, comparison was made between the microstructure of a rapier made in Caino as well and the uh, Storta sword microstructure. The different distribution of the microstructures suggested that different forging techniques were adopted depending on the type of blade to be produced and its final uh, utilized on, on field. So the hypothesis uh, for a forging method for the rapier blade made of pattern welded steel. And here shown a possible method of composing the starting billets to produce a start a sword with uh, the pommel made of roof iron and the guard as well and the pattern will steel block with a uh, root iron core inside, then forged into the final shape. On the basis of these results, it was made a replica uh, of Master Tommaso di Zanzani's Storta sword, uh, adopting the same uh, technique, techniques uh, described in the treatises. So, uh, and realizing a V-shaped iron core and a pattern welded skin. That's the result. The forging was performed following the instant methods and you, using the instant uh, hammers and grinding wheels and uh, everything. <laughs> That's the difference between the original forged by Tommaso de Zenzani in Caino in 17th century and the copy, only four grams in weight of difference. 
for any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at my email address. And thank you for your attention.